Welcome to episode 4 of Alpha Tutorials. Today we're going to take a look at some rumors that are doing the rounds as we prepare for a big Sony announcement apparently next week. And we will also be taking a look at the exposure modes and how your camera thinks in the various different exposure modes. I'm Tristan Hall and I'm your host. Today we're going to look, as we said, at some of the rumors doing the rounds. The internet is going ablaze with different rumors about new Sony cameras that are coming along. We've taken some, then we'll include links to them in our show notes as well for you that you can get at alphatutorials.co.za. Some of the rumors doing the round, and we'll go through them here, is the Alpha 77. It's the long-awaited replacement for the Alpha 700. We've seen prototypes and mock-ups of this camera over the last two years in particular that Sony have had at big events like Photokina where we were at uh, a year ago. And so everyone's prepping to see what this camera is going to do. Some of the rumors doing the rounds um, about this camera is that it's going to be a 24.3 megapixel sensor. Um, not full frame, still APS-C size sensor, which sounds incredibly high. Uh, Canon at the moment have 18 on their cameras, so it'll be interesting to see how this camera performs. Um, they're making a lot of noise about it being able to do 1080p video at 60p in, uh, and also 24 frames per second. So a lot of talk about the video improving and being more professional, being able to shoot video as in program, aperture priority, shutter priority and manual modes. Um, there's talk of there being a high-resolution electronic viewfinder. It's still going to use the translucent mirror technology, apparently, that we've seen in the Alpha A33 and 55. Um, but what they're talking about is having an OLED viewfinder in there. And OLED is new technology. We haven't seen it put into many commercial applications yet. And that sounds to be quite an interesting one if they do um, follow through with that. Talk of it being an SD card and not compact flash. Um, and some other things that they're talking about is having an improved autofocus system, that it'll be dust and moisture proof. Um, so a whole lot of new and interesting things to lift this up to be a pro level camera where the Alpha 700 uh, kind of left off when, when it was last on the market. There's also a little bit of talk about an Alpha 65, which is a, a skimmed down version of the A77, but there's not a lot of talk about it. Everyone's more excited about the A77. Um, but you can find out some information about that at sonyrumors.net. And on the NEX side, there's talk about a new NEX 5 and an NEX 7 coming out. Now, we took a look at the NEX uh, C3 in the previous show, and it was a given situation that at some point soon, Sony would replace the NEX 5 as well. Looks like what they're going to be doing is basically taking the NEX 5 we have today in many features and respects and adding a touchscreen interface to it and upping the resolution to 16 megapixels like the C3 has. So we, we'll probably see them shrink the body and change the body a little bit, but no, no major huge announcements there. The NEX 7 is the one that sounds very interesting. That sounds like it's going to be an NEX version of the rumored Alpha A77. So 24 megapixels, it sounds like it's going to have a hot shoe, which the NEXs lack at the moment, have a built-in flash, so it might not be as compact as the other NEXs, but it certainly looks like they're going to be aiming this at a pro, pro camera or pro market uh, when this hits the, the shelves, if the rumors are true. We do know that there is a Sony event happening next week, uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, we ourselves will be here present at a local one here in Sony South Africa, so it'll be interesting to see what's announced. We hope to be able to give you some new information about that on the day as the, as the, the announcements come out. Without any further ado, let's take a look at um, the tutorial section that we want to focus on today. And as we, last time we wrapped up our discussion around the exposure values, aperture priority, shutter priority, um, or aperture, your ISO, your, your shutter as well. And we're going to look today at what the difference is in how those are controlled by the camera in the various exposure modes. So we're talking your aperture priority mode, your shutter priority mode, your program mode. Um, your full manual mode and the various different uh, automatic modes that are available there. Um, first of all, very important to understand, while Sony have some great technology inside the camera and it does give you scene selection modes, they also have an auto scene select mode where it looks at the scene, it measures the distance to your subject and it says, um, you know, well, this is a landscape that he's trying to photograph or portrait or something of that nature. Um, there's limited control in these automatic modes. You're not able to edit any of those exposure values manually yourself that we've spoken about before. And for this reason, we highly recommend getting out of those auto modes and into at least the P mode on your camera as quickly as possible. The P mode, the benefit that you have with program mode is that your program mode gives you the first thing it will allow you to do is change your ISO and set that manually. 
um, instead of having the camera trying to guess the ISO that you need for the given circumstances you're in. Why is that important? Well, remember we spoke about last time, perhaps you've got a good tripod, your camera's tripod mounted, and you want a slow ISO, but that means you might have camera shake. In program mode, normally, the camera is going to try and set that ISO up to make sure you've got a fast enough shutter speed to avoid camera shake. So by moving over to P, you can get out of auto ISO, and you'll be able to set the ISO manually for yourself. So that's the first thing you'll be able to take control of. The next thing that you can do is move on to your A mode or your AV mode, depending on the camera that you've got. AV aperture value or, or aperture priority mode um, basically means that we get to set the aperture we want to use for our photograph and the camera will set the shutter speed and balance it for us automatically. So it's a semi-automatic mode and that's a great mode to get into, particularly when you're photographing portraits or you know you, what the specific aperture that you want to get the desired result. Um, from my experience, we find that a lot of even professional photographers shoot in aperture priority mode quite regularly. There was a poll done a little while ago where it was upwards of 70% of photographers shooting aperture priority mode because it just gives you a bit of control of, over one of the main priorities and that's the depth that you're going to have in your image, the depth of field. Shutter priority mode works the reverse. There you get to set the shutter speed and the camera sets the aperture automatically for you and matches it to what it thinks is correct exposure. Remember, in all of these modes, we're still able to set the ISO manually ourselves. So that comes in really handy. Um, so again, shutter priority, you'll be able to set the shutter and the camera will set the aperture automatically for you. And that's a great benefit to be able to say you're photographing motorsports, you want a specific shutter speed that you want to get every single time. Um, that the camera will be, you no need to worry about anything else. The camera will worry about the aperture and balancing the two to best effect for you for in that mode. And then finally, you have manual mode. And manual mode is where you do the balancing act of all three. The camera has an exposure guide that tries to point out to you what you should be focusing on or where your exposure should be. Um, a little graph and it, and it gives you plus and minus. And if you get it in the middle, according to the camera, you'll have correct exposure. And you can adjust your aperture and your shutter and your ISO independently to get to that desired place. Um, and that allows maximum control. Now, if you do any photographic course, they're going to try and get you to shoot in manual so that you get to understand the way the, understand the, way the camera's thinking. And that comes in really handy. Don't be scared of manual. Get out, try manual, experiment, see what happens by shooting in manual mode. Um, and that will give you an opportunity to experience what the different ISO aperture and shutter speeds do. Take note of what you're doing. Make sure to check your XF data from the, from the file. When you open it up in your software, it will tell you what aperture you used, what shutter speed you used, what ISO value you had. So that you're able to go and see what those various different effects are and how the camera works. Also very important that I want to touch on is exposure compensation. Now that's the little button on your camera with the plus and minus on it. That feature there doesn't work in the full program modes or the auto modes. It's only when you get into P, A, S and M modes that you're able to use that. Well, M doesn't really matter, but P, A and S that you'll be able to set your exposure compensation using that button. So again, just highlighting that the auto modes and all those picture style modes, they're great effects and they're a great way to get started with the camera as fast as possible. But as soon as you can, get into P mode. The camera's still doing the same thing, but sometimes you want to override it. Sometimes you want to tell it to add a bit of light or remove a bit of light. And you can't use the exposure compensation. You can't set your ISO in full auto or the picture style modes. So those are some of the modes that's the way the camera thinks. Next time we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about how the camera meters the scene. What is it thinking? How is it measuring the light? Sometimes the camera can be fooled and you may find that as you go and experiment with these different modes. Send us your questions if you have any from this week and from trying out these modes and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Hold thumbs for some exciting announcements next week. If that's it for this time in Alpha Tutorials and be sure to check out the website alphatutorials.co.za. You can send us questions, read more articles and get the latest news on Sony there. Have a good time.